Hey everybody, welcome back to the Creatives Conversation with Helps 2. I am Gabriela Marte. I'm the director of Helps 2 as well as a musician, creative myself, and I am with the famous, soon to be famous in my personal opinion, y'all can come after me for it, I don't care, Amber <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> So, first of all, I'm going to have Amber, you're going to tell your own story, but sure. this is Amber's first podcast and interview. Yes. So, that's kind of like, we're checking some boxes today. Yes. That's exciting. But I just want to say how I met you, and I really don't remember, like, the moment. I do. You do? Okay, yeah. then tell us. Okay, I'm nervous. Yeah, it was a Friday. We were still in IHOPU. It was after EGS service. Okay, so IHOPU is the music conservatory that we both went to. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we all would, like, go to this place called Nick and Jake's for, like, half-price apps or whatever. Yeah. And there was this massive table of us of, like, 20 people. It was, like, ridiculous like so loud and obnoxious and there was the other end of the table where you were sitting at and i wanted to go hang out with y'all and like because i was like really? i don't know these people okay. i've never like i've seen these people but mm -hmm. i've never like talked to them and so i was like i'm gonna go up over there and i'm gonna like sit down and eat my food with y'all and then yeah. really yeah was that like three years ago that was a while pretty ago. close yeah pretty close yeah, well, you're a musician. We didn't say that part. Amber's yes. a musician, a phenomenal musician and vocalist. Thank you. Singer, songwriter, artist. Would you call yourself anything else? Producer. Okay, producer. Yeah. And she produces. And so, which you do, you produce really well. And so, and I can't say that about everyone. And I am a music snob, kind of, to a degree. Like, I love when people do music and I'll root anybody on. But, like, for me to be, like, you're a good producer, that takes a lot of, like. Wow, thank you. Yeah, it takes a lot of, like. You have to be good, in my personal opinion. I've heard so much music. So I have kind of gotten to see a little bit of your journey. So because we went to the same conservatory, I got to see Amber. And, like, I was never in your classes because you were always ahead of me and probably still would be if we were still in school. But, yeah, I've seen you, like, briefly in the hallways. But I saw you lead on, like, what is it called? Like, the service it's like worship service team. team. It's like a worship music team. team. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, this girl is really gifted. And then you kind of like, well, I wouldn't say graduated, but 2020 happened. Yeah. And you didn't really get to graduate technically yet. Right. But they sent us our degree and everything in the mail. So like, <laughs> yeah, I'm technically, I'm finished. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I hop you so amazing. But I will say this, and I have a little bone to pick. This is horrible. Maybe I shouldn't say this. But they sent my diploma and the printer was running out on ink, so like a little bit of it. You need to get that reprinted. <laughs> I, said, I know I did not spend two years here to get. You need to get that reprinted. That's at least a $10,000 paper. You need to get that reprinted. I'll I vouch for you on that. Yeah, and yeah. so they asked me actually yesterday, they said, did you get your diploma? I said, yes, I did, but anyways, that's a whole nother story. Yeah. So when you technically kind of graduated, it wasn't official because it's happening this May, but like you started really going for it, yeah. which was really atypical because I think a lot of people from like the International House of Prayer University end up going into ministerial positions or like they go on to do more schooling. But here's Amber Wilson putting out singles and all of a sudden jumping on things like TikTok and going hard on TikTok and really going for it. So I want to hear your process. Like, let's just start off with the dream. Like, what does it look like in your head? And I think another question is, when did you know that this is what you wanted to do? Mm. Mm. Yeah. First of all, again, thank you for having me. This is huge. I'm very, <laughs> I'm like fangirling. I'm so happy to be here. This is like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to be journaling about this tonight for sure. When you get but, famous, I'll be like, uh, I'm so honored yeah, to have I knew had her. her so. yeah, yeah, I discovered her. No, but I mean, as far as like when I knew I wanted to do it, I feel like there was a part of me that always knew. But I hadn't really, and that sounds so cliche because I feel like most people in my position, like starting up or when they get to that spot, they say that. But for right. real, I feel like I always knew that. Um, and it's cool, too, because like I come from a family where like people in my family, like they play instruments and they sing and stuff. Oh, cool. And I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And so between that and then, you know, like Saturday morning, wake up at 6 a.m. There's gospel music in the background, oh, like waking amazing. you up. It's time to clean. Like I was just always surrounded by music. So I feel like it was just like one of those things that was like programmed into me, like subconsciously without me knowing. But mm. I feel like I didn't really start having those little like 
thoughts to myself until I want to say I was a junior in high school mm. and I remember being in choir class like I loved choir like choir was the one class where I was like I have to get 100 mm. I have to get a plus really in choir. Okay. yeah because I just felt like that was the one thing that I was good at so I was yeah. like very honorary about it like I have to do well in this class but I remember too like there was this one point because the choir that I was in in high school there were like a hundred of us mm. and oh my gosh wow I just remembered there were like times where I'm I talked about this with other classmates in high school at the time where it's just like it felt like you were just like a face in a crowd obviously mm. and it felt like when there were moments for people to have solos it was like the go-to people would always be the ones to get a solo like it would very rarely be a different mix of people like it always just felt like sometimes the t- the teacher was playing favorites like mm. not to be like mean but like it just felt, just felt that bad. way and I think teachers and humans we have our natural tendency to just like keep choosing what's comfortable and never look beyond that so I get it but it's also not fair like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and I don't know I guess like over time I was just kind of like I was like getting a little upset and I was like, I want that. Like Mm. I want a spotlight, like I want a platform. And then of course, as quickly as I said that, I was like feeling a little bit of shame about it because like growing up in Houston, hardcore Bible Belt, like- Oh, for sure. Literally a church on like every corner. It's like Whataburger Church, Whataburger Church, like the whole stretch of road. (laughs) (laughs) Whataburger. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know, it was just like, having to keep that to myself for a little bit because I was like, Mm. what will my church friends think? Wow. If I tell them, one, I'm upset that I'm not getting attention. Two, that I even want attention. And then on top of that, that I crave a platform and a spotlight and all this stuff. But even still, like, I was super dorky. Like, I was one of those kids. Like, I'd wait till my parents would, like, go to sleep sleep at night and I'd just be in my room, like, with my earbuds in, like, pretending it was my show. And I was like, (laughs) like, I'd put on, like, I would put on, like, Diva by Beyonce and just be like, Diva is a female version. Like, in my room, like, yeah. (laughs) I know too much. Yeah, yeah. That is so funny. I don't know. I guess it was just, like, that was the point, I feel like. So I probably would have been about, like, 15, 16. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So, like, when did it become... Like it went from dream and your mind and heart to like, this is now a life I'm starting to live. Like when was the moment? Junior year of I Help You. Okay, explain. Yeah. Um, I started taking songwriting classes mainly because we had to, like we had to take at least one songwriting class mm-hmm. in order to graduate. And I was like, okay, like, yeah, I'll give myself to the process. Cause I had written like a few songs when I was right. younger, but they weren't like songs that I would consider like good but I had written songs um and then yeah I fell in love with songwriting and then I was gonna say right before that school year ended we had the celebration which was like the talent show that we did for the music program and then a week before that too we had um like a little songwriter showcase called Outspoken I was there for that that just happened in the cafe and I was like feeling in my gut I was like I feel like I'm supposed to do something for this, but I don't know if I'm supposed to do something, whatever. Went to Taco Bell that night, wrote a song in line at Taco Bell. Like that's how slow Taco Bell was. (laughs) Wrote a song while I was in line at Taco Bell. And then I ended up performing it at the Outspoken event and the Talent Show event. And then from just there on, I was like, no, like enough is enough. Like I'm tired of like, I don't know, like deferring to other people in the sense of like, I'm Mm. tired of caring about what people think about me right and I mean like in a respectful way like obviously right. like I will take what people say to heart like with a grain of salt and everything well, if they but have value in your life for yeah, sure yeah 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 oh that's a, an artist struggle we could do a whole podcast on that <laughs> right like when yeah yeah but okay so first of all let's back up to this Taco Bell song yeah what was this Taco Bell song I think people are gonna ask this question so I gotta <laughs> ask it for them before they get yeah, to it yeah it's Taco Bell song the Taco Bell song is called internal okay and funny enough literally the premise of the song internal it was literally just about my internal wrestle with the fact that there are all these things that I want to do Mm. and there are so many like outside opinions both from people that I love people that I used to love who aren't in my life anymore like people who just want to like give their unsolicited advice and opinion just for the sake of like oh, yeah. filling the space with their voice. Yeah. You know? you know, and it's funny, I think, especially like not just in 2020 or 2021, I feel like in the 2000s in general, like the internet came about and people who like yourself and myself who put themselves out there, I think 
It's like this weird unspoken invitation that's not really given for people to come and give their opinion. Like I've had people listen to some of my music and be like, I don't like the guitars on that track. Yeah. And I'm like, I never asked you. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. If you like these guitars, like I don't care, but like I do care, but it depends on who you are. Yeah. If I care or not. Like I love you, but like if you don't have that equity or like that influence in my life to like spout an opinion. It just has different weight, you know? Yeah. And it's hard to like what you're saying because it's like, it's, it's at least for me, like I'm learning words like empath. I feel like mm. I'm an empath. And Explain so, that because some people listening, yeah, they probably don't know. I feel like as an empath or someone who literally just feels and picks up on like other people, like where they're at mentally, their emotional state, it's hard to sometimes for me dissect they're meaning well versus like what I was saying a second ago, they just want to talk so mm. they can be like, oh yeah, I was there when I was there when yeah. Yeah. Amber did that because of me. And it's like, no, like you I just said know. that to boost your ego. Yeah. Yeah. And like your thought about me is wrong in that sense. I think that is so interesting. Like when did you figure out that you're an empath? Senior year mm. of high school. So, Oh, that's like, we went on a, a choir trip to New York and I was just like, fed up obviously because I was like I'm ready to graduate I'm ready yeah. to like get out of mom and dad's house yeah but just like picking up on like people's like oh they didn't pick me for the solo again mm. oh they didn't acknowledge me oh I don't get to hang out with that group they didn't put me in that hotel room with that friend group dude so you yeah. were going through a lot yeah so you, have you felt like an underdog sorry yeah <laughs> we went from like <laughs> music to like sorry therapy <laughs> therapy <laughs> no yeah yeah. yeah. Okay. Has that like fueled you? Absolutely. Okay. In yeah. what sense? What do you think? I think I definitely have a heart for the underdogs. Me too. Like I'm always like, yes, I'm rooting for you. Even though I don't know you, yeah. you know? And then in the sense too, it's like seeing what's happening now, like after the black lives movement, when we don't have to like talk about it for the whole thing, but no, just go briefly ahead. touching yeah, on please. it. Like it's cool to see, you know, like what Will Smith was saying, like racism isn't getting worse. Like racism is getting filmed. Like there are mm. people now who are able to like come side one mm. another. And there's like this sense of camaraderie for the underdog. And it's amazing now that I have this outlet for music to be able to write that down pen to paper yeah, and be able to be like, hey, like I made this through, like they made it through, I made it through, you can make it through too. And here's the proof from like, point a of the timeline to like now right, kind right. Of sense yeah and i think one thing i enjoy about your songwriting is well first you're a christian and i appreciate that about you but like you haven't taken like the typical and i don't i'm not devaluing i'm a christian as well so um i'm not devaluing like the typical christian artist like route to doing their music i love worship music i'm a worship director at a church right now i think it's great I just appreciate that you have chosen this route with your music to stand in places where like not everyone is like you and you can, you know, sing a song about love and like not just about love. Like it's not that simple. Like these songs that you're writing are definitely meaningful. And I, I listen and I'm like, whoa, like she's documenting history like in her life and through her eyes. And I think that's a beautiful thing about art and artists, like just not even just music, but like you know, the Van Goghs of the world and like people who are designing like different, like nowadays it's like illustrations online and like t-shirts yeah. and all these cool things is like, we have this ability to document these moments, like where the underdog is now like getting heard and say like, this is what I'm experiencing. This is history. Yeah. History has always been that way where people document, right? But it's just different. Now you have this outlet, outlet, you've kind of always had it, but you're putting it out there. Your outlet is out there, I like that. But uh, maybe that's a t-shirt design or something. <laughs> but what, uh, let's let's go back a little bit. Yeah. What does that look like for you? Like, I wanna hear about, cause I know you're on TikTok, you're yeah. crushing it on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching you because Thank like, you. I don't have the stamina for TikTok, I'll be honest. Me I'm neither like, sometimes. <laughs> no, you do it though. Yeah. Okay, tell us about what your TikTok experience and like what you've been doing and how like the influence you have on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. So just to backpedal a little bit. So after the 2019 period happened where I wrote the Taco Bell song, um, that summer in, I wanna say May, Okay. I officially like kickstarted my YouTube channel. Oh wow, um, okay. And Is so, that the first thing you've like done to put yourself out there? That was it. That was like the first 
that wasn't the first video I had posted on YouTube. That was like video number three, but that was the first video for me where I was like, all right, I'm committing to this journey. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So it did YouTube. Um, and this pause, yeah. I'm sorry to keep pausing you or make you pause, but what like in, like, what did you see? What was in you that made you say, I am now committing versus like throwing out a video every six months. Like some of us, I've done it. We've all like been there, yeah. but like, there's a difference between that and be like, I'm going to post a video every week, yeah. every two days. Like what made you commit like that? Yeah. I mean the first, cause I had posted covers, right? Like mm -hmm. that's what I do now. I do covers, vlogs, like helpful insightful stuff like that but right. i feel like it was a mix of because the first video i filmed it was because i was bored like let's just be honest i was <laughs> bored and i didn't have anything to do <laughs> right that's real so i feel like it was that but also too like i just had that aha moment where i was like i need to stop waiting for a handout Ooh, like i need to so i need to stop feeling sorry for myself yeah like, this is really pitiful amber <laughs> wow so you felt sorry for yourself for real yeah. okay yeah. wow yeah. okay I think I used to wait for like this divine, like, I don't even know if it was divine, that but like too. this moment, like, and I don't know why I think about Justin Bieber, but I think a lot of people think Justin Bieber just got like this handout moment, no. but this dude was out here hustling, hustling. and yeah. then just like his hustle met like someone else's like perspective eye, right? I think it was like Usher who discovered him, mm -hmm. but like Usher saw a video of him and he was posting videos like consistently yeah. on YouTube. So, okay. That was your moment. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and so I want to say it was about the year mark, maybe two year mark. I started feeling a little bit fatigued mm. because of things like the algorithm. You're going to yeah. probably hear that word a lot these days. The algorithm. I like how we blame the algorithm for our inability to stay consistent <laughs> to make, sometimes. To make good, wholesome entertainment content. Blame the algorithm. When in doubt, be a creative. Blame the algorithm of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. No, but I was feeling a little bit fatigued because I was like, what the heck, man? I've been grinding at this YouTube thing. And at that point, I was doing a video a week, sometimes two videos a week. And I was just like, what the heck? Why isn't this working? And I feel like people around me in my life, like at work, were starting to mention TikTok. And mm. I was like in that self-righteous phase. I was like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do TikTok. That's, That's for the little, the little teeny boppers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to do TikTok. <laughs> like I am a mature woman in her early 20s. That's I don't funny to hear that. you say that because now, <laughs> I mean, you're going to keep going. But like I, I have seen. So it's funny. Um, and so just this... 2020 4th of July I had the whole house to myself and I was experiencing a little bit of FOMO mm. fear of missing out because um I had the whole house to myself and all my friends were like out during like 4th of July stuff even though COVID was happening and I was just mm. like oh I could just like call them up real quick but then there was that part of me that was like no Amber we're literally in a pandemic like think about your parents like mm. think about your family who yeah. literally cannot go out at all yeah like just stay put so i was like all right whatever so again the boredom thing happened and i literally just made a tiktok account just for the sake like just for the heck of it for the fun of it and um i posted like a little 10 15 second cover video and then i uploaded it went about my business came back an hour later and it had like 800 views no way. Whereas in comparison to like my YouTube videos at the time, they were averaging like 20 to 50 views. I know that when I started YouTube, like when I committed to it too, and I had been on there for like 10 years, I feel like already. Yeah. But I was just posting stuff like every six months, like a music video. When I committed to it, I was really disheartened. I get like as a musician, like 20 views helps too as well. Like we get five views, 15 mm -hmm. views. And eventually you're kind of like, yo, I'm putting time into this. Yeah. And this is not working. Like, yeah. what is happening? So TikTok, you got 800 views. On that first one. And then... Um, just Wait, when was this? Like, this was 4th of July, 2020. Whoa, so okay. I will have been on TikTok. It'll be a year, the 4th of July this year. Wow, you haven't even been on it that long. Right. It hasn't been around that long, really. But like... Right. Okay. And this is right now, we are March 2021. Yeah. Dang. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Um, and so then after that, I was like, let's just do what I did for YouTube. Let's commit for... 30 days because I heard a wise man once say it takes 30 days to build a habit mm -hmm. it takes 90 days to build a lifestyle mm -hmm. so I was like That's let's good. just do 30 days do the habit assess it 30 days see how I feel like mentally emotionally about all of it and then go from there 30 days passed I think I had hit 2k or something like that 2,000 followers. followers okay yeah okay and I was like okay I think there's some real estate in TikTok mm. I think there's there's something here. Let's keep going. Um, and now I'm at 10.6 thousand followers. That's a lot. On TikTok. Like you haven't been on in a year. Yeah. No marketing dollars, right? Right. 
just organic traffic, people following you. Yeah, and sliding I see these in people people's coming. DMs. Yeah, and they're yeah. coming to YouTube, right? Like some of them are coming yeah. to listen because I've seen them in the comments because I'm nosy. And so <laughs> when I go to check out your song on YouTube, I'm looking at the comments. I'm like, yo, this is oh dude here from TikTok. Yeah. Like, all right. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk strategy. Sure. Because people are listening that are creatives and some of them probably could hit up TikTok. Do you feel the door is still open? Like, is there still real estate? on TikTok, like you said. Absolutely, I think you just have to know now though, because it's not as new as it was, mm. people know about it. Okay. And I'm personally seeing this now in my current content that I have batched, like batch filmed and ready to release in comparison to the content I already have out, that because the algorithm TikTok now is becoming more saturated mm. with people, it is going to be, I feel like personally, it's going to be harder than it was for myself or for anyone who joined the app when it first started because now everyone and their mom is like realizing that there is value in TikTok. Okay. So, I mean, I think just going into it, just knowing that again, it's not going to be an overnight thing. No, like, yeah. you're going to, you're going to, unless you put some marketing dollars behind it. Yeah. 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 You're going to have to, I always tell myself this all the time, but I'm like, Amber, you just got to get out of your own way. Mm, you really, that's you a really whole message. To. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because I think the thing too, like what I think you briefly touched on it, like we're in that time now where it's like we're used to the instant gratification. We're used to seeing like the 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 big thing that we want to happen to happen now. And if it doesn't, then it's like, oh, I'm a failure. Yeah. Well, that flops. Well, in right. our generation, legit, we were brought up like that. Like yeah. our parents might not have taught us that, but McDonald's did. You know what I mean? And my parents used to take me to McDonald's like every Sunday. That's our thing. Yeah. Not anymore. Thank God. But yeah, you would just get in line. You get your happy mail. It took, what, 30 seconds sometimes? Yeah. Like, now it's a little bit longer for these lines and stuff. But, yeah. And then you're growing up thinking, well, this is how the world works. Yeah. And it doesn't. Right. Like, great things that are worth having take time. Like, yeah. not even just with this. Like, anything, really. Like, you most typically takes time. And so, okay, let's talk more about TikTok. Sure. Because I think people are going to be curious. Yeah. And I'm curious. So. Yeah. What is your strategy, if you don't mind sharing? Sure. Give us what you can and I, what you want. I, uh, I briefly scratched on it, but okay. I'm a hardcore believer in batch filming. Okay, explain what that is. Batch filming is basically where you, first of all, you brainstorm out a list of like content ideas or whatever. You can do it on pen and paper, or if you're like me, always on the go, you can have a little notes page in your notes app. Mm. That way you're constantly just writing down ideas. Because I think the fact of the matter is it's like you just want to stay creative. Mm. And creativity isn't just like this where it's like set up all the lights in the camera. Sometimes creative is just, I'm going to just make a checklist of things that I could maybe do one day. Mm. Like for me in my mind, like that's creative. And that also helps take the pressure off of me and my shoulders. Mm. Where if I have those days where I wake up and I'm like, I'm exhausted. I don't want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Like, then Those I'm like, hey, happen. like, I'm not, I'm not a complete failure because yeah. I like have that list. But yeah, batch filming, it's just where you, you have a list of ideas that you've made throughout the course of a week, a month, whatever time frame. And then you set aside. For me, I do a day, sometimes two days a week, where exclusively on those days, all I'm doing is filming that content. Wow. Like, I'm not doing editing or anything, I'm just filming. And I'm storing them away in my drafts. Okay. So TikTok's really cool because they have it set up where you can film all your all of your content, and um, you can draft it away and then just like upload it when you're ready. And now too, I just found out they're doing like a beta testing version on the desktop app where you can wow. actually draft those videos and schedule them Whoa. to be uploaded. Okay. Which TikTok. is really cool. That's yeah. awesome. So I typically try to have. In one filming session, I tried to do 10 to 15 TikTok videos per filming session, which sounds like a lot. But from what I've noticed with my uploading strategy, three to five videos per day is what I'm uploading in order to reach the audience that I would like to reach, like my targeted demographic. Yeah. As well as keep the current audience that I have entertained. Okay. Yeah. This sounds crazy a lot. Do you yeah. feel like it is a lot? Like how yeah. many hours do you spend yeah. like a week on TikTok? What would you say? I mean, I'm on it every day. Because okay. It's for like sure. It's on our phone. But as far as like the actual work of it, I mean, four to six hours a week. Actually, that's not which bad. Which isn't bad, but over the course of a month, you like look back in your planner and see all the little notes on your to-do list. And it's like, 
yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, but you have a goal. Like, you're not just doing this for fun. Like, you're not like the 12 year old or the 15 year old who's like, I'm just gonna make dancing videos. Yeah. Cause I'm bored. Like, and this is fun. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's what TikTok is for. And I think that's what makes it so organic is that mm -hmm. you have like a ton of young people that are just like, and people my age that are like. We're just gonna dance and have fun. Yeah. But then you though, you're pulling traffic to like take them to what you're creating. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about some of your wins. Like yeah. most recently. So you've been like really pursuing all of this music, right? And going for it for like what? Not even a year. Yeah. Like since May? I would say 2020? 2019 was like the catalyst. Okay. So we'll say like almost two years in May. Okay. Which is crazy saying that That's out loud because it feels like it's been so long. Because you've been diligent, yeah. consistent, which is one of my biggest tips. People always say, how should I build my brand? And I'm like, well, how you should build your brand. Number one thing is consistency. consistency. Yeah. Like your stuff can be mediocre, but if you're consistent, you'll do better than someone with amazing art. Correct. That doesn't do it consistently. Correct. So yeah, I was listening to a podcast with Ed Sheeran and because George Ezra, I don't know if you know George Ezra. Mm -hmm. He's like, the I do. <laughs> he's yeah, that he's guy. Okay. <laughs> but he, uh, he has a podcast and he had Ed Sheeran on for one of the podcasts. And um, Ed Sheeran was talking about how talent can literally only bring you so far. And it's True. the artist who is mediocre and is willing to put in the work. He's going to go farther than the guy who's like talented and is like gassing himself up like, oh, yeah, I can like do this John Mayer riff better than John Mayer can. It's like, all right, that's great. But you're just a cover artist. This guy who's like mediocre gym is out here like actually writing songs and like going to the Grammys and you're still here on your couch talking about your John Mayer riff. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, and, and that's, so, I know too many people. I, you know, that's where the underdog mentality, which sometimes stems from like low key trauma, sure. like moments in your childhood where people told you weren't good enough it really does fuel you to go for it or it could totally break you. You have to decide, right? Like, cause I have the same mentality. I had a ton of people growing up that were just like, yeah, we don't see it. Or like, yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm trying to, okay. Yeah, I got bullied in school. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, then you know, like firsthand. Yeah. yeah. I got called names. I remember this one. I don't know why we're talking about this, but this one kid called me a gorilla. Wow. I don't even know. He could not explain why in middle school. And I was just kind of like, but it really hurt me. You know what I mean? So that underdog complex started up and then sports came, right? And I wasn't really like super, super artsy. I was, but not like in an influential way yet. And I remember not getting chosen like so many times or told yeah, or like, being picked last. Yeah, yeah. Or being told I had to change something. I remember one time I got kicked off the basketball team because the legit coach said, well, are you more of an artist or more of a basketball player? Yeah. I was like, dog, this is high school. Like, I don't know what it matters. Like I'm playing and I'm doing a good job. And so just different things like that. Like, so I get it. So yeah. Tell us more about, about that. You're talking about Ed Sheeran, this podcast about just being consistent. Like what has it brought you? I want to hear some wins and I want to hear some losses too. Yeah. Loss, I had to get over ego and pride stuff. Okay. I had to learn how to be okay with being told no. Mm. In what sense? Tell There's us more. There's this website called Submit Hub. Where Submit you can, Hub? Hello. I'm where you, I actually don't <laughs> recommend it. But um, <laughs> basically, this website is really neat if you do well on it. Mm. I haven't had luck with it because it's very competitive. But it's basically a website where you can... Um, submit your singles, EPs, albums, whatever, to total strangers, mm. and they will review your music. And if they like it, you'll get put on these really popular playlists, get gajillions of streams and all this stuff on like Spotify. And then if not, either you'll get ghosted multiple times, or they'll be very, very harsh with their reviews. <laughs> so you've had the latter? Harsh, and I should say too, like, brutally honest. Like, mm. constructive criticism from someone who doesn't know how to give constructive criticism like someone who has no compassion almost feels like yeah very very little compassion yeah so yeah. I've, I've had to learn how to be okay with rejection not be okay but face rejection face i it. should say yeah um, and it sounds like you're being honest with yourself too because you're like brutally honest and some artists might be like yeah they're tripping like yeah and not face that yeah so wait, what do you, what happened when you got like some of this feedback back and you're like, they're brutally honest. Did you change it or did you I just, no I normally would get ghosted, mm. um, or like no response or random stranger would be like, yeah, I don't like you. I just don't like you. 
Whoa. <laughs> like, like, I don't know who you are. Wow. I've never met you. Um, but when with that, though, in my songwriting, I'm like at that point now where I wasn't before where I'm like, okay, if I don't like this song, I can just write five more. Mm. Like, it's going to be okay. That is the best method. Like, I was yeah. talking to a really, really good friend who wants to start a clothing line, and they're trying to figure out their designs, and I'm like, just put one out. Yeah. And they're like, but it has to mean a lot. I'm like, you feel that way now because you're just getting started, but on your, like, 391st design, yeah. you're still going to prize every design, but it's just a different ball game. Like, if one sucks or you messed up on one, there's, like, five more to be created. A hundred more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, too, like, just getting that mindset of Amber, not everyone's going to see the blood and the sweat and the tears that goes into making a song, making content. They're just going to see the wrapped, finished present, mm -hmm. and they're going to critique that. They're not critiquing you deciding if you should talk about this guy that used to have a crush on from high school. They're not going to, they're yeah. just, they're and not going to even that know. Is. I mean, uh, well, obviously if I release that song, then yeah, they're going to know that. For it's sure. About, yeah. You know, but like. <laughs> yeah, that's real. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. just taking that pressure off myself. Mm -hmm. um, another loss, having to understand that people are fickle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. People Especially are, with the internet. Yeah. Yeah. People are very fickle, like just as much as they are opinionated. So people are always going to be coming in and out in the mm. sense of like, I'm always going to be gaining followers just as much as I'm going to be losing followers yeah. and vice versa. And having to be okay with the fact that it's not a me thing. Like I'm not going to be everybody's cup of tea, cup of tea. No, you're not. Yeah. yeah. And that's a beautiful thing to realize because I think, I don't know what it is in each of us. Like I think most of us can really get into this thing if we don't ever address it. Everyone should like what I'm doing. Like, yeah. why don't you like what I'm doing? And the minute you realize that like, Everyone has their own flavor, like down to who they date, to the foods they eat, to the music they listen to. You start getting offended. Like yeah. when someone doesn't ask you out on a date and you had a crush on them, you're like, I'm just not their cup rude. of tea. They look, <laughs> yeah, first of all, you're rude and heartless. Rude. No, I'm just kidding. That's Tasteless. how we can be though. Yeah, total butthead. Like, you know what I mean? We go down these paths and these spirals, but the reality is, is like, dude just doesn't like me because I don't have red hair. Like, yeah. nothing doesn't make me ugly. I'm still yeah. nice cup of tea. And this person doesn't like your song because they like country music. Yeah. And then you don't make country music. I see music. it all the time on Facebook, especially from our classmates. Mm. <laughs> really? Yeah, like, I'm going to call them out. I'm not going to call it their actual names, but yeah, I'll call them out. The ones that know who they're doing it. Yeah. Do it. And then what do they say? And I know they mean well, but it's like, just think about the fact kind that. Of stuff? Think about, I saw somebody, one of, I'm a big Niall Horan fan, right? From One mm. Direction. And he was talking about how it's like interesting how brave and bold we get once we're on the internet mm. behind a keyboard. It's called keyboard courage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, would you go up to someone on the street and say that exact thing to their face? No, you wouldn't. You'd you be wouldn't. a little coward. Yeah. So stop it. Yeah. Stop with your keyboard courage. And if you want to, if you can do better than do it. But like, I mean, yes, be constructive with the criticism, but at the same time, like... That's why I support you so much. Does everything I see you need going to be for said? It. Yeah, it doesn't. No. And I and here's the difference between people who have keyboard courage and people. I was gonna say like me, which sounds so pompous. I support you. Oh gosh, wow. But <laughs> you know, the keyboard courage ones and the people that will support you are the people that are supporting you are probably on the ledge too, putting themselves out there, jumping into yeah. the mix. And the ones with the keyboard courage probably want to do it but don't have the courage yeah. but they have keyboard courage yeah yeah it's different because when you start doing it it's just you know how hard it can be you stop with all your comments and stuff because it's you know how hurtful it is yeah perspective is different yeah i'm glad you called them out i'm all yeah. about it so that's a it. synonymous loss and win i mean other wins though like today mm -hmm. never thought i'd be doing a podcast interview ever in my life Really? Never. No, you knew it was coming. Come on. I eventually. Mean, I hoped for it. Like, yeah. again, too, I would pretend like, oh, yeah, here's my little brush microphone. There's James Corden right there. It could happen. <laughs> I'm speaking it into existence. Okay? James, we're both here. We're waiting for our moment. Okay? CBS. Yes. <laughs> Put me on. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I never I thought I would great. have a first single. I never thought I'd have a music video. Oh, yeah, which we helped with yeah, here. For Timeless too. Love. Yeah, that was awesome. With the iPhone 12. Filmed and a on gimbal. the iPhone. Yeah. yeah, that's it. It was incredible. Yeah. We'll put a link. If you're on YouTube, we'll put a link in the description of this, and you'll be able to see it. It's amazing. Yes. I enjoyed filming that. Yeah. Um, I'm coming out with an EP. Let's go. Okay. That's crazy. Five songs? 
We'll do four this one. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. That was my first project as a musician. Just a good five song, six songer. Yeah. It was great. One of my favorites ever still to this day. Yeah, it's crazy. I have the photo shoot for it tomorrow for the artwork and everything and all the promo with my with a good friend and classmate of ours, Madison Pierce, who's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Okay, so what's next? What's next? I mean, the EP is coming out. You're doing the photo shoot. Like, what's the dream in like five years? What do you think? Like, in yeah. a perfect world. I, I, again, this is something I used to be back and forth on and was like ashamed to say. And now I'm like, I don't just care. Just go for it. But I, I really want to get signed to a label. Okay. Like, That's I, awesome. I really do. Um, I was just thinking about yesterday. I was like, how cool would it be to like write a song with like Sean Mendes or like oh Adele? Gosh. Yeah. And be like, hey, Sean. Or Sean not Mendes even that. Would be great. Just be like, hey, like, do you want to go get food? Yeah. Like, let's just like do life. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be artists together. Yeah. Yeah. That changed the world. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Okay. Now, before we end this, I want you to give us some tips, right? Sure. For people, because you are no longer starting. You've started. Yeah. So people who are creatives and starting, and there's more than musicians that listen to this, you know, just so happens that I'm a musician, so I naturally have a lot of musician friends, right? Mm -hmm. But like... Any creative, what would be like maybe two or three things you would give them in terms of like, hey, do this, don't do this. What would you say? Yeah, first and foremost, be kind to yourself. Mm. I feel like we all have this big ambition to change the world. And I was talking about this with a friend, but I'm like, I feel like we can't change the world unless we start working on ourselves first. Oh, that's good. Because yeah. it's very easy to like pick and knock it people like without thinking about ourselves first which is so i feel like contradictory to what we're taught as christians which is to love others first and then mm. put yourself last but i'm learning now as i get older i'm like i can't love this person until i love myself right like i can't love people and write songs for people without understanding who i am as a person how i feel about certain things and then take that and apply it to how maybe other people that I've never met may never meet are feeling about the same thing and understand mm. it from their perspective. Yeah. So, yeah, I think first thing, be kind to yourself. Self-love. Mm -hmm. like, please love yourself. Take care of yourself. Sometimes it's not just like a face mask and a bath. Sometimes it's, oh, I need to go to bed on time. <laughs> I, yeah, I need to go get therapy. I need to eat my vegetables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take my vitamin D gummies. Yes, yep, I, need my, I need my Flintstone gummies. <laughs> yeah, that's real. <laughs> I'm I'm straight on it. I got mine yesterday, as you know, so. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's real. Yeah, and then, of course, to, like, forgive yourself, right? Because yeah. I feel like I'm, and this is probably just, like, a life thing, too, not connected to artists, but it's, like, I feel like now that I'm an artist and I'm decorating time with my music and, and everything, culture. I'm reflecting on everything in my life. Things that I, of course, remember, and things I had forgot about happened, interactions mm. with people, things I've said. So, of course, to like forgive yourself, I yeah. feel like because it's like when you're in that mental headspace all the time of like, oh, what am I going to write about today? What am I going to create today? It's very easy to like, I guess, condemn yourself before you've even like put yourself out there. And honestly, just like, yeah, like, yeah, I think a lot of people don't ever put themselves out there because of the own voices in their head. Yeah. And their own expectations and stigmas and in here, like has nothing to do with anybody else and what they've said most of the time. It's yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What's another thing? Thing two. We already mentioned it, but be consistent. Ooh, that's good. And don't be afraid to suck. <laughs> I love that. Don't be afraid Point to suck. Point number three. Don't be afraid to suck. Yeah. 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 There's just moments where you suck. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing a worship set this past week, and I listened back to the song a little bit, but I was just singing it. And I'm like, dang, this key is high. And I'm like <laughs> out of... <laughs> I'm like messing up my pitches off. I yeah. said, oh, Gabby, this is a little high. <laughs> <laughs> like, so you're just going to have moments, even when you're like good and you're a professional. Like we classify here um, at Helps You through our book. We have said like, I guess professional really is when you start getting paid for it. Like when people pay you to do something. So I, I was a professional in that moment <laughs> and I totally bombed it. Happens. It's real, real yeah. life. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Anything else? Make sure you've got good friends and family in your corner. Mm. You know, those people who know you. Yeah. So that when it does get big or as it gets bigger and people are like mad that you won't hang out with them or talk to them or you're being sketchy and it's like, no, I'm not being sketchy. Mm. Not everything is meant for you to know. 
yeah boundaries yeah you know? mm, that's huge because that's another thing too i'm learning now as i'm getting older of course and then as things are getting bigger people are wanting to know more about me in my life and i'm i'm having to have to learn how to tell people no mm -hmm. respectfully and yeah. then of course be prepared to handle the blow the blow up of that yeah. and how they react yeah <laughs> to when yeah. i'm like no i'm not comfortable with you in my life i'm not comfortable with you knowing these things about me yeah that's real and even in that just learning how to still like bless people and like you know be kind to them when they're doing things that would otherwise elicit a different response right. out of me and i yeah i was telling someone about that the other day because i can totally relate to that people on all ends of the spectrum with their expectations for you all of a sudden i'm like well, where are these coming from yeah but yeah i told someone the other day i said hey you have to know and i was talking to somebody like with those wrong expectations I'm gonna like you because, and treat you how I want to treat you despite how you've treated me. And you know, I would say that this is a godly construct, if anything, that's where I pull it from. Like, I'm gonna treat you kind and compassionate and with love because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. Not because, e even though you did me wrong mm -hmm. and you're telling me like these weird things, I'm not gonna treat you based on that because that's not who I am. Yeah. Like I might have moments where I stumble, but like, yeah. that's, that's really what it is, is like learning. People are going to treat me all kinds of ways. It's honestly, Who am I? at least for me, again, as an empath, it's a war. It is. It's such a war. Because I'm always like, oh, but maybe they meant well. But then I just know that I know that no, they didn't. Yeah, you can sense no. it. I know, I'm the same way. Don't, <laughs> I think I might be an empath. I saw this on Instagram where it's like, don't fall in love with someone's potential. In other words, mm. don't fall in love with the idea of what they could be. Like, you need to either love them for who they are. Mm -hmm. And if you can't handle that, then you need to leave. Yeah. And my great friend, Kendra Tool, who's an aerospace engineer and super creative with her own brand and stuff. She said, do not make excuses for people. Because yeah. we can do that and end up yeah. in places like that are not healthy, very toxic, and, and it's as humans. hard. It is hard. It's hard to look someone in the eye and be like, "No, yeah, I'm denying you access, yeah, to myself." Or just like, "Hey, when you did that, it really hurt me." Yeah, that's hard to do too. Yeah, and then watch them and just let them react and yeah, explain themselves. Yeah, if they dare so choose. Or yeah, I've had it too where some people go and like talk crap about me to like old friends or classmates mm. which i'm thankful for it because the people that are in my life they're in my life and right. i know them they know me well yeah i'm thankful for that but it's hard to watch people that i was in good terms with now like we don't talk anymore because like that person like they took someone else's narrative yeah. and ran with it yeah oh yeah oh that's so good okay one last question and we're done yeah okay. so if you were on an island this is fun you're on an island what three things Island forever. <laughs> what three things would you take with you? Mm. And there's Wi-Fi. Is it a nice island or is it a castaway island with Tom Hanks? <laughs> Tom Hanks won't be there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's like, a, it's nice. Is it's, it a bougie island or is it a ghetto island? It's medium. Medium. <laughs> Six out of ten. Okay. Six point five. I'll bring a book. Okay. Some type of poetry book. Okay. I like poetry. I dig that. I did not expect that, but I dig yeah, it. Yeah, me neither. Okay. <laughs> I was like, okay. I'll, uh, I'll bring a, like a canteen okay. for water. Okay. So I can just I it. boil ocean water. Get the salt out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like that'll go further than just like a case of water or something. Yeah. And it's not heavy. I'm trying yeah. to think minimal. We can get you a Berkey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they make the salt out of there, but yeah. Um... I bring some sunglasses. I love it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna chill. I just see you sitting there, like chilling. <laughs> I love it, Amber Wilson. Thank you for coming on. How can people get in touch with you? Yeah. On the interweb. Ooh, I get to look at the camera. I've always wanted to do this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you can actually follow me on all social medias. I go by um, at Music from Amber on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Um, you can follow me on there. And then I'm also, of course, on YouTube. It's just my full first and last name. Just no capitals, Amber Wilson. Um, yeah. Simple as that. It'll be in the description box below. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, we'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe.